Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. So I've just pulled everything out of my tank and I've given it a good watering and I've noticed a lot of progress and a lot of different stuff to talk about so I wasn't going to shoot this video today but I ended up deciding to shoot this video today. So welcome. Um, this is going to be a look at everything in my orchidarium. I'm going to go through each and every plant hopefully close up in detail and we're going to have a little chat about them and see all the progress things that are going on right now and all the cool stuff that we have to come as well so thanks for joining as always and um yeah here we go this is a full orchidarium tour of all the plants so this is the monster of the tank and yes this is a really big plant um, especially because it lives in my small orchidarium so this is Bulbophyllum speciosum and I've had this plant for two years now. It's doing really really well. It's put on a whole bunch of new growth this year. Um, all this stuff that's projecting out basically is new growth. And what I've noticed the other day, let me zoom in, hopefully we can see it. Right here, right in front of my fingertip, that is the beginning of the first spike from this plant. I'm hoping we get more we had two flowers last year on this plant and they are absolutely spectacular. I love this plant. So hoping that um, we get some more. I know that the spikes came out a bit staggered last year and I'm hoping they do the same thing this year. But lots and lots of growth. We've put on tons of root growth on this plant. It's just kind of rambling all, all on itself crazy and um, a really, really healthy orchid. So. That is Bulbophyllum speciosum, and we do have big things coming on this plant. This next plant is Restrepia mucifera, and I love this plant. It's got really awesome red, velvety little blooms on it that come up on the very underside of the leaf. They really don't have any kind of a pronounced flower spike at all, and it's a neat plant. It's put on a ton of growth back here, but none of them are full size jet and I've been having issues it lives on the bottom because it really does like the shade and um, you see this yellowing leaf here what happens is water gets down in here and it's just a minute amount it does not take much and once you get water down in here I'm telling you they rot so fast so this is one of my only plants that's been giving me any issues at all and it does live in a tank so the other restrepias I have moved over to the tent and they're doing outstanding, at least for the time being. And this plant really might go join its buddies over there soon. Um, the reason it did not when I got it was that it had a pretty terrible root system. And I don't know if you can see this here now, but it really does have an extensive root system through this moss here. They extend out in all directions, all the way down to the bottom of the mount and beyond. So. Um, it's a healthy plant, it's a happy plant, except for a couple minor issues, but um, yeah, it's, it's doing well. It does bloom for me periodically, and it grows alright, excluding this. This has happened quite a bit to me. So this plant is Lepanthopsis acetabulum. This is one of the two Lepanthopsis species that I do cultivate, and this one is the healthier of the two, believe it or not. This is a cooler grower and for some reason it just is a lot happier than the other one that I grow which we'll have a look at next. Um, this is almost constantly in spike. It just finished up blooming and I cut all of its old spent spikes off finally because it was starting to look really really ugly. But it has pushed out a really nice new growth here this winter and there's a keiki starting really close to the base down here so I'm gonna let it go and we're gonna see what happens with that. We'll probably end up with another plant growing from the same plant on the base here so it'll just double the blooms, double the size, double everything eventually which is a good problem to have so love this plant it grows moist it grows pretty much just like a Lepanthes um, I do not give it a whole lot of light it's down in the very very bottom of the orchidarium right next to the plants that we just looked at and yeah does really really nicely really cool little species 
little plant is Platystella baccaroy or baccaroy. Um, I would like to say it does well for me, but it does not. It's a fighter. I mean, it constantly pushes out spikes that blast all year long. So <clears throat> what I do typically is I go through every now and then I cut them off. I try to put some, you know, <laughs> strength back into the plant. Um, this is the only section of this plant that has survived and it's kind of grown away from its mount if you've seen. Um, yeah, it's a, I think it grows cooler than I'd like to keep it. I think it grows shadier than I've kept it for a long time and a lot of other issues. Um, what I've done is I've basically put this down in the very, very bottom. This hardly even gets any artificial light at this point in time. It's in the very bottom left corner underneath plants. It is well, well shaded and it still does this. So it was turning yellow. I was having lots of issues and finally I've got it to green back up. It's pushed on some new growths but the the darn thing just wants to flower and it can't. Not in my environment. It's flowered a few times for me and whenever it does I jump for joy but um, yeah this is one that might not be around much longer so I figured I'd give you guys a little look at it now. This is Platystella baccaroy for all you Platystella freaks. I love them, but they are really tough to grow for me. Here we have our other Lepanthopsis species. This is Lepanthopsis astrophora. And I got this plant from Tarzan. It was a keiki division. It was a group of keikis that was potted and it was in decent shape. Unfortunately, I kept it way too moist for way too long. A lot of the keiki divisions have died or are dying and only a couple of them, the ones that were you know mounted higher up above the moss have actually pushed on so uh, they do like to be moist um, kind of like a Lepanthes or a Mastodelia or something there is definitely a too moist and it's kind of a fine line so this one's finally doing okay at least this portion of it it's got lots of roots pushing down into the moss but the base of the plant is nice and elevated above where the live moss is so I'm hoping that long term it does okay it's produced all these leaves for me this year lots and lots of growth off the keikis but I think it's a far way off being happy enough to bloom so we'll have to check back in on this one it is not as happy as its friend even though it should be the climate for it is much better than supposedly the other one is for I'm sorry than it is supposedly for the other one but this one just does not want to grow well for me. Not yet at least. So our next plant is I think become my favorite mount. This uh, plant is pretty awesome. It's definitely my favorite Dracula. This is Dracula Lotax. We just saw this thing in bloom but unfortunately the bloom spikes have ended. But I don't know if you can see or not. This thing is literally growing left, right, and center. We have four directions of growth on this plant. So Let's see, I'm going to get in here. Got new growth, new roots starting right here, getting down in that moss. I've got more new growths down here, more up in the middle here, and some tucking up through the moss right there at the top, moving upwards. Very, very healthy, very happy plant. It absolutely loves the orchidarium, and I'm super excited. The moss has just taken off on this mount. Again, this is probably my favorite mount. Just look at that. All that live moss. That is forest moss mixed with some live sphagnum moss and it just creates this awesome, awesome contrasting moss with small fine fibers tucked in and amongst the bigger sphagnum moss. And again, I just think it looks really awesome. Really natural looking mount. And it is probably grown to be my favorite. Now, this plant has done really well so far. I hope it continues down the path. It sure looks like it's going to, but um, we'll just have to see. So that is Dracula Lotax, and we're gonna move on to something really special. Now, the next orchid on our list is Mazdevalia Exquisita. I recently moved this over from the tent into the tank, and since I've done it, it has absolutely taken off. It is really, really happy now. I am pleased to say, if you haven't seen it already, that it does have a bud that is progressing very, very nicely. I can get it in focus. 
and I am thrilled. It's starting to get some color on it. It's starting to inflate just a little bit. And just moments ago, I don't know if you've seen that before I did or not, but I just noticed another spike starting right there. There's a new growth just forming on the back side here, just below our spike. So I think it's safe to say this thing is going to stay in the tank. Much happier with the high humidity. I do let it get pretty close to dry before I water it again. It gets lots and lots of airflow now. And yeah, it's just it's just a happier orchid. So Mazzavelia exquisita and it is really, really nice to see a Mazzavelia finally happy enough to try to throw up flowers. It's been a long time coming. So this plant is another Mazdevelia success story, and I'm very happy to say that. This was a newer plant. I got this from Tarzane, I think in the springtime. And uh, I divided it when I mounted it, and I'm sorry, I divided it when I potted it, because the larger section of this is actually growing in the tent, and growing in a mesh basket with large bark and sphagnum moss and it's doing okay it's actually in spike two but it only has one spike whereas this much smaller division has three with one bud that's actually getting pretty close I would say to thinking about opening it's starting to get color it needs to start inflating a little bit more I think but um we are getting there for sure and two other spikes behind it so a much happier plant this has produced a lot of new roots. It's got roots all the way down here, poking out of the bottom, and um, everywhere else. Climbing up the back, aerial roots that stay, again, with their green tips, because of the very high humidity in the tank. So that is another massive success story that is coming soon. So the next two plants that I have are plants that I do consider to be recovering. This right here is Mazdevelia patriciana, and this is Lepanthes dodsonii. Both of these plants have suffered, and I will start with this one. The Mazdevelia patriciana, I got this from Tarzane. It was a very, very hot week, <laughs> that week to be honest, and this thing got annihilated by the heat in shipping. It was down to two leaves, this one and this one, and I thought for sure that I'd lost it, but as you see, it has exploded with growth. It's got new growths all over it, leaves that have pushed out. It's starting to grow a decent root system. I've seen a few roots pushing back there, and it is now a pretty happy plant. I am really excited to see this thing growing on. It's got really cool flowers, and yeah, it's just a happy little orchid. We've got some nice live moss growing on this thing now, and... Um, yeah, it's just a really nice environment. I do let this mount almost completely dry out before I water it again. When I looked up the culture and care for this plant, they said that Mazzavelia patriciana does actually like to get pretty much dry, almost dry, in between waterings to make sure that it's successful. So once I started following that, this plant rewarded me with all of this new growth. So great success there. The Lepanthes dotsonii, I had moved over into the tent to try to get it some lower temps because I struggle to bloom this. This is one of the only Lepanthes, one of two, that struggle to bloom for me. It does like to grow much cooler than I normally grow, but as you see here, down at the base, it had gotten annihilated. Lots of these growths got eaten. I did find out, finally, what the pest was in the tent, it was a mouse. A mouse had gotten into my house somehow through a little hole in the wall in my utility room and it absolutely wreaked havoc in my greenhouse. So I, I've had other insect issues and stuff before pop up here and there and I've been treating stuff and treating stuff and treating stuff and nothing was working. Things kept happening. It would subside for a few days and then it would come back. And this plant, I think, bared the brunt of all the devastation. This plant used to be way bigger than this. I'll try to find a picture if I have one, but it was at least double, if not two-thirds, larger than it is now. 
and it took me two, two and a half years to get this plant this way. I got it from Equigenera. It was almost dead when I got it. It got down to like two or three leaves. This one in the Dodsoni, I'm sorry, this one in the Caladictyon, both. And I will say, it is a strong little bugger because for the second time in its life, after almost devastation, it is just bouncing back. It's got at least five or six new growths starting down there at the base. And I'm happy to say that I think we've saved it. I put it on this mount, I got it out of the tent immediately, and it is back living in the tank in the high humidity. And that's where it's going to stay, I guess, for the next two years until it's strong enough to try another winter inside the tent. Hopefully it surprises me. Maybe we can try it out again next year. But this might be the very last time that I put a Lepanthes in the tent. My poor baby. Oh my god. <laughs> Alrighty, on to the next. So this next plant is my Poroglossum Portillier. And this thing has two large spikes on it. This one just dropped a bloom and it's pushing another bud here. I can still see a little purple node in there. I don't know if we'll be able to zoom in and see that or not. Let's try. So if you look close, there's a little purple dot down in that spike that just dropped its bloom. Just like the purple tip on the brand new one here. And that's usually a sign, with this species at least, that it's going to continue to throw spikes. And if you look down below, oh gosh, let me get in here. We have got at least two, three, four other spikes coming on. Three on this side and another one down low, tucked in back here. This plant is smothered in new growths. The new growths come out with this neat little pattern on them. You can always see. Uh, here's a good one back here. And as they mature, they get a lot more green, but they do keep the pattern kind of faintly. You can see it in brighter light. Um, really vigorous growing plant. It does do this occasionally. It'll drop some leaves. Every now and then the older leaves, several of them will turn yellow at once and just kind of drop off and it'll scare the death out of you. But right behind it usually is a flurry of new growth. Deep down in here you can see there's just new growth after new growth. There's roots pushing on and I'm very happy about this plant. It's probably doubled in size since I got it about a year ago. So that is great news. It is well on its way to becoming a nice little specimen sized Plurithalid, and I just love that. So, that is, Porto, uh, that is Poroglossum Portillier, or Portier. But this plant is my Plurithalis rostratissima, and this plant is always, 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 always flushed with blooms. This started blooming a very long time ago. I'll throw the date on the screen somewhere because I have it recorded, but since the day it started blooming, it has not stopped. Every one of these little joints along the way down on these flower spikes. And they, some of them go a very long way down. Every one of those little joints have bloomed. So, if you guys have a keen eye, fun, fun game would be, I guess, to try to count that. But I tell you, it's dozens. Lots and lots. I mean, this thing just keeps on going and going. That is a sequential bloomer. That is what that means. It means it literally never stops blooming. This is a good example of one. It's got a flower on it and a bud coming right behind it. You can see both of them right there. Anyhow, the plant, I don't know if you can see that or not, has had better days. I think what happened is I was using my sprayer a lot. I was running short on time watering for the last few months and what happened was I got fertilizer on these leaves. It gets a lot of airflow, so I think what happened is it dried quickly and the salts have damaged it quite a bit. I also noticed, perhaps I wasn't flushing enough or something, but I've got a tremendous amount of root loss. You can see a lot of brown roots in there. Oh, let's focus. And um, that is an issue, so this is going to be on the list of upcoming plants to get remounted and or repotted. It may be, may be potted, you never know with me. But 
I think it's going to go back on a mount. It grew outstandingly on this thing for the bulk of its life, but I've just had a turn and I need to get ahead of it before it goes down. So, like I said, do not be fooled by all the blooms on Pleurothalids. These things will literally bloom themselves to death. <laughs> not kidding, they're very vigorously blooming plants, very floriferous, if you will. So, anyhow, that is Pleurothalis rostratissima and it does need a little help but it's an awesome plant this next plant here is another awesome pleurothallid species that i grow this is condylago rodrigoi and this plant has put on i mean a hell of a root system for a pleurothallid growing mounted it's got roots all over the place thrilled about that and several new growths as well it's kind of slowed down in the growth department. I expect it to pick back up here in the spring once the weather gets a little bit warmer. But something that we do have is one, two, and three flowers. This is only the second time it's bloomed like this. And I've got a fourth one right here that looks like it could bloom any time in this next week. Hopefully, this one, which is the oldest one, sticks around long enough for this one because that will be a first time that this plant here has had four blooms on it. They're neat. I did a video on this. It has a little trapdoor shut effect lip just like the Poroglossum that we looked at just a moment ago. And um, it's one of my favorite Pleurothalids. Love this plant and it is doing quite well. It gets a lot of light. These leaves are some of the older leaves. I had this when I got the plant. I do not think it's anything wrong with this one like there is with the other Pleurothallis that we just looked at, but it does do that sometimes. It will drop leaves. All Pleurothallids will. So anyhow, on to the next. So the next two plants that we're going to look at are the two Tristellas that I recently picked up from Tarzan. This is Tristella hojiri proper, the species, and this is... Tristella hojiri crossed with Tristella uh, triglocken. I'm sorry, hojiri and triglocken hybrid. I guess that's special. Um, they said in my research, I have found that I guess a lot of pleurothalids are very difficult to hybridize. You don't see that quite that often, so that makes this one a little bit special. They have almost identical blooms. This one just has coloration and a slightly different shape, but they're very much both hojiri dominant, I guess you, you could say. Um, these plants are mounted identically. I got them at the exact same time, so we're just going to look at them together. They both did very well acclimating to their new mounts. Let's get in here. So, they've both done a really nice job acclimating to their new mounts. As you see here, we've got lots of new growth pushing up here and down on the other side as well. I see some roots growing on this one, which is good because this one didn't have a whole lot. And this one didn't really miss a beat. Drop a few leaves here and there, but it has pushed on a whole bunch of new growth already. You can see it's the shorter, lighter colored things coming up. Some of them haven't even opened yet. And um, yeah, I look very much forward to seeing these things keep growing and pushing on and blooming because I've always wanted to see these flowers in person. So those are my two Tristellas, Hojiri and Hojiri crossed with Triglocken. This next plant is Cranslinellia anfracta, also known as Pleurothallis anfracta, one of those many, many plants that has changed names. This was just a keiki. This right here grew off the flower spike area of my other one, which is really still not doing so well. <laughs> this one, however, has pushed on another growth that is starting to take root. So I think we may have saved our Cranslinellia anfracta just by chance because I really had no hopes that this would actually live. It just did nothing for a very, very long time. But we have growth, we have roots. I guess we're gonna look for more growth now and potentially blooms down the line but this plant is going to live in the tank the other one's going to live in the tent and I think this one's probably going to win out eventually this next plant so I have to probably get in there for you guys to really see it is 
Macroclinium delstromii. And it's a weird little tolumnia like plant. It's got fans. They're red, they're warty, they're spotted, they're really, really cool. It grows with zero moss on this mount. It pushes up a root occasionally. It's got a little bit of live moss growing back there, barely hanging on because it grows very, very dry. Um, this little light green area here at the bottom and the little tiny short stubby thing that you see to the right is its newest attempt at a fan. They push out just like that, one finger at a time. Funny little things. It does bloom reliably, despite the fact that it looks like absolute crap. It is a really healthy little plant for me, and it does bloom every single year since I've had it. Two years in a row, it has bloomed. So that, believe it or not, is an orchid, and that is Macroclinium delstromii. So this plant has a bit of a history with me. This is Maxillaria uncata, yet another Maxillaria that I have been unable to bloom. This grows in the tank because whenever I've grown it in a tent, it promptly turns off and dies. I do not know what's wrong, perhaps temperatures, I just don't know. It hates the tent. It grows in the tank, it gets as bright a light as I can give it, and I did take it out of its pot because it was growing in a little mesh basket. The uh, media started to smell and I didn't want to have anything happen because this plant almost died once. It was down to literally like three little pine needle growth things that you see there. Um, and it, it kind of came back slowly but surely, I mean, I don't know if you can see this now, but it is a very vigorous growing plant. It's healthy, it's got tons of roots now, I've put it on this little mount and it's taken to it. This is how I got it from Andes when I got it a few years ago and all I've ever done is kill this plant. So lots and lots of progress. It is doing well but as of now I still have not gotten to bloom it. Um, I think it needs cooler temperatures. Um, I, I don't get that cooler temperatures in the tank. It goes down to about 60 or 59 at the coldest. So. I would like to maybe let it winter in the tent next year, but I'm really scared to let it live full time. It absolutely does not like the warmer summers, for me at least. So I think I am going to actually end up breaking this video up into two parts. I did not realize how long-winded this has gotten until I looked at the clock, so forgive me. I am going to break this up into two parts. It's not going to be one big video. This will be the last plant we look at. This is Mastavalia winlandiana. This was a beautiful plant when I got it from Tarzane, and I mounted this section of it on this mount, and it has done super well. It has grown and grown and grown. It's mounted with a mix of live and zombie moss. It's produced some new roots. It's still producing new growth after new growth. The only thing that I haven't seen any signs of yet on this plant is a flower spike anywhere. The one time I had Winlandiana before and I managed to bloom it, it was about this time of year, but I do not know if we're going to have that kind of luck with this plant. So far it's growing fantastically, as is the other smaller division that I do have growing in the tent as kind of an experiment, but so far so good. This is one of my nicer looking Massivalias by far. Beautiful plant, lots and lots of progress, lots of new growth sort of just dwarfed the other one so I think we're close but who knows when and that is Massavalia Winlandiana this wraps up my video for today guys thank you so much for joining I do appreciate you tuning into my tour of my orchidarium I don't know if you noticed or not but you must have if you're a huge fan of this tank I did not really include any Lepanthes in this tour we're gonna do them separately like I said I have tons of plants in here this thing, here we'll put this away. This is everything that we've looked at so far. So I will shoot that video here a little bit later on. I'm gonna take a quick break. I've been standing for quite a while, guys. <laughs> so thanks again for joining. I hope you've enjoyed it. And tune in next time for the rest of the orchids that live in this tank. All of the Lepanthes. In my opinion, the stars of the show. So until next time, thanks for watching. Like I said, please remember to stay safe 
and happy growing guys. See ya.